I, I have to give this back today. Hey, pub. I have to give this back today. You're, you're not the champion anymore. You lost, you lost to the rabbit. Okay? We wish you the best of luck in your future endeavours. WWE's first event of the Peacock era bled its plumage last night. Was it a fantastic spectacle that drew in new eyes? Or was it deeply unpluckable? Let's find out together. This is WWE Fastlane 2021 Graded. On the kickoff show, we have Riddle defending his United States Championship against Mustafa Ali. Now, Ali knackers Riddle on the ring post very early on in this one, and he spends the majority of this in control whilst hot dogging and or grandstanding to retribution at ringside. Riddle gets back into it when he counters uh, a neck breaker springing into the ring with a gorgeous rear naked choke in midair. That looked mwah, chef's kisses. Riddle uh, will then land a rolling fisherman buster as, as Ali tries to counter out of it. Riddle eventually lands it. It looked really nice. We see Ali nearly get a submission with a Koji clutch, but Riddle is able to deadlift out of it. This continues on until Riddle and Ali fighting on the top rope. It results in an avalanche style bro Derek from Riddle for the one, two, three. After the match, as Riddle leaves with his title, Ali just chews out retribution. This leads to Reckoning taking a walk, Slapjack taking a walk, and then T-Bar and Mace hitting high justice on Ali and then taking a walk. Given this an A minus, this was possibly the best kickoff show match I think I've seen in the kickoff era. Like this was excellent. They didn't have bags of time, but what they did with it was great. And hey, look at that. Retribution are over. Maybe not in the way that you think I mean, but Retribution are over. First match on the pay-per-view proper is the women's tag team titles with Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax defending against Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair. Both teams bickering from the off. Reginald's all right, though. He's ringside chilling. He had a lovely spa day, bless him. We see, though, as the match unfolds, Belair and Banks seem to have... The, the, the better tag team techers here. They're a more well-oiled unit than Jackson Baser for the majority of this. However, Jackson Baser are able to take over on Bianca Belair, keep her from a corner for a good long while. When Bianca eventually makes that hot tag to Sasha, she just goes bananas on everybody. She ends up almost getting the win had it not been for the distraction from Reginald. He gets a sucker punch from Bianca Belair for his trouble. Banks puts the bank statement on Shayna Baszler. And then we see Belair run in to, to help out. She ends up getting thrown by Nia Jax into Sasha Banks to break up the hold. These two begin arguing. It looks like Bianca Belair is going to take a walk from the match. But in all of this confusion, Shayna Baszler rolls up Sasha Banks for the three. And the champs retain. After the match, we have Banks and Belair arguing in the center of the ring once again. And we have Sh uh, Sasha Banks slapping the taste out of Bianca Belair's mouth, calling her a rookie and leaving. Bianca, stunned by this, eventually points to the sign. It's on at WrestleMania. I'll see you at Raymond James. This was a B, better than last month's match that they had. Some really good flurries in here and some even better storytelling as well. Let's just buckle in now and get ready for Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair to make some magic at WrestleMania. Earlier today, Shane McMahon seemed to do himself an injury during training for a match that we didn't think was happening tonight. It's all been very confusing. He's backstage on crutches whilst Elias is trying to convince him to make him a part of WrestleMania. Shane McMahon has a plan, though. More on that later. We'll park that. Apollo Crews challenges for the Intercontinental Championship next. He's up against Big E. And Big E starts this one intense and aggressive. This is a, a really angry side of Big E that we've seen coming out on SmackDown over the last couple of weeks. Uh, the first part of this match is him just battering Apollo Crews. One of the first moves is a spear through the ropes. He hits two splashes onto the apron, all the while reminding Apollo Crews that this is 
the match that he wanted. We see Cruz hit a low drop kick onto Big E to start to get back into this one. Hits some rolling German suplexes uh, to get a near fall. We see Apollo land a beauty of a frog splash as well for a near fall as well. Uh, the finish comes pretty much out of nowhere. And I'm a bit baffled by how all this went down because we have a series of roll-ups back and forth. And then the, sort of the last one seems to get a bit muddled and it looks as if both guys pin each other's shoulders to the map, but the ref only counts uh, Apollo's. So Big E wins the match like that. It was just, it just, just came a bit, it was a bit of a sloppy finish. It came a bit out of nowhere. And moments later, we see Apollo jump to his feet and attack Big E, lays him out with two Olympic slams, uh, saying that this is not over. There's more of this story to tell. Uh, B minus. I thought it started really well. Like, I thought we were onto something really special here. And then just that finish, really sudden, just felt a bit flat. It almost felt like it was a botched finish. I don't know if it was, but it felt like it. A, we had a 24-7 title change during the Old Spice commercial as the Old Spice salesman very briefly became champ. I like the idea of commercials becoming canon for the 24-7 championship. I, for one, would love to see the Go Compare Man or that guy from Butterfield Detective Agency maybe become the 24-7 champion. Call now. We then move on to Braun Strowman and Shane McMahon, apparently one-on-one. -on -one. Or is it... No, it's not, because Shane McMahon introduces Elias at the start of the, at the, start of the match. Elias is going to play a little concert. He gets a couple of, couple of chords in before Shane goes, oh, sorry, I forgot to tell you, you're replacing me in my match against Braun that's happening right now. Ta-da, see you in a bit. Out comes Braun Strowman. They replay his gunging from Monday night because we certainly needed reminding of that, and that made him angry train man, and he just batters. He batters Elias here. Elias gets a, a very brief flurry in this match, but this is all brawn. Running power slam and done. Giving it a D. What they did was serviceable, but pointless. I hate this storyline. I hate the fact that now we're getting Shane and Braun at WrestleMania. I don't care for it. I'm not invested in it. It just means we're going to get three more weeks of Shane McMahon doing those promos that he genuinely believes are the height of entertainment and the height of baddiness. And they're not. They're just a bit crap. Riddle proposes a wacky scooter business to Shinsuke Nakamura backstage. It's funny because he's like, it's like he's stoned. Shinsuke in action next. He's facing off against Seth Rollins. They had a bit of a back and forth on SmackDown that's got us to here. And obviously Shinsuke's mate Cesaro sitting at home for this one after Seth Rollins attacked him. This is a good match. We see Rollins hit the first big move with a running knee off of the apron onto Nakamura. Now as he works over Shinsuke, he's shouting about the 22 swings that he got from Cesaro. Uh, Seth holds a really sturdy lead until Nakamura is able to fire up with some of those signature knee strikes later into the match as well. Uh, Rollins gets back into it with a dive through the ropes. We see a Kinshasa countered with a buckle bomb. We see a Stomp countered with a Mishinoku driver. And as Nakamura goes for one more Kinshasa, Seth's able to avoid it and kind of do like a jumping standing back kick, which I thought looked beautiful. And he then hits a Stomp for effect for the one, two, three. Seth Rollins beating Shinsuke Nakamura. Giving it a B plus. I thought they did some really good stuff here. I didn't think, I got the impression that they're keeping a little bit back, but I really love the stuff that they did. This is one of the better matches of the night so far. Emphasizing so far. And if it leads to Seth Rollins versus Cesaro at WrestleMania where they can tear it down and hey, I am fine with that. Up next, talking of tearing it down, Drew McIntyre has promised brutality, the likes of which we've never seen in his match. Next, he is facing Sheamus, and it's no holds barred, not like the film. Sheamus is out, and Drew is out with Scottish face paint on. He's the most Scottish man since Mel Gibson in this, and the fight almost immediately goes outside. We have the stairs pulled up, chairs thrown everywhere, the tables destroyed. Sheamus breaks down Drew McIntyre with kendo stick shots in the ring. Drew's able to land a lucky glass 
Glasgow kiss to grab the kendo stick and return the favour. They fight into the crowd and go all the way round the back of the monitors where Seamus is doing a number on Drew. But as this goes on, Drew is able to fight back into it. He ends up hurling Seamus into some of the monitors with the webcams on, where people are watching at home. It goes flying through there, sparks going everywhere. It looked brilliant. They continue the fight back towards the arena with Drew just battering Seamus from pillar to post. When Seamus gets back into this one, he manages to, to land a big old bro kick that sends Drew back over the barricade. They don't go too far into the crowd this time. Instead, we see Seamus standing atop the barricade on the fan side and hits a white noise through the announce table. This was amazing amazing little bit this just it felt like Seamus and through the power of camera angles and stuff it felt like Seamus went flying with this it looked great back in the ring it looks as if Seamus is going to finish this one off he's got a piece of the announce table in there but Drew able uh, to stop the rot hits a future shock DDT followed by a claymore for the one two three and Drew McIntyre puts his former best friend away in an incredible match and I'm giving it an A+. Plus. Best match of the night so far. Best match of the night. They delivered on what they promised, which was a really aggressive match. They had a, they had a no holds barred match on Raw a couple of weeks ago that I graded down. And I remember saying in that, they're holding back. They're going to give us something more at the pay-per-view. And here we go. An A+. Plus. From, not just from bell to bell, but before that, the video package they had... Uh, the, the, a beautifully stylized video package. I do believe it's the, the chat behind the old videos for OTT Wrestling. It looks like, if that's you, it looks like your work, and I'm loving it. The whole thing from the beginning of that to the final pin, this felt great. This got Drew McIntyre into a great position going into WrestleMania. I thought Sheamus would win it, but you know what? After watching that, loved it. Loved the result, loved the match. Excellent work. Two matches left to go. Randall, Randall, Keith facing Alexa Bliss now. Not quite sure what we were going to get from this one, were we? But Orton, as he's getting into the ring, doing his signature poses, starts hacking up the black stuff again. And this just annoys him. You've interrupted his signature taunts. He's livid. Alexa Bliss out next. And they want to make sure that the... The Firefly Funhouse music is as uncatchy as possible. And to do that, they've just had it so it, it sounds like it's been warped through a cassette player. And it's playing and it, it just it sounds garbled and horrifying. And I like it a lot. Uh, the bell sounds on this one. Bliss immediately hits Orton with a fireball. They end up outside the ring where, Bl where Orton is stalking Alexa Bliss. And she stops and looks up at the rafters. And suddenly, like about this far from Randy Orton, a big lighting rig hits the ground. Orton, Orton looks just annoyed about everything that's going on here. Bliss encourages him to get back into the ring where she hits him with another fireball. Hey! And just as he's... I think he, they say on commentary he avoids, he avoids a bit of it. So he might have got away with it. And just as that's all happening, we see a hand come through the ring. Grabbing the leg of Orton. And then a hand becomes a body. And lo and behold, it's Crispy Fried Fiend. The Fiend is back. Scary old gear makeup job going on. Looking a bit like the Toxic Avenger. Uh, because he's all burnt and stuff, isn't he? Is the Fiend. So that's what's going on here. Bliss pushes Orton into the Fiend. Fiend hits his sister Abigail. And Bliss straddles Orton for the one, two, three. Something that Randy Orton's wife isn't massively happy about on Twitter. And then the, the last shot we see for, the, for this bit is Bliss laughing on top of Orton with the Fiend. Just this charred purple monster type thing standing over Alexa Bliss. It's just uh, a spooky, spooky scene. And you know what? I think, I think this will be divisive with fans. I think you'll either love that or you'll hate it. I'm giving it an A minus. In terms of wrestling match, there wasn't a match here. It was, it was a segment. It was an event. And it was done really well. Like, I love the effects and the visual stuff they've had going with, with The Fiend and Bliss and Orton throughout. I thought The Fiend's return, whilst predictable, was the right time to do it now on, the, on that last stop before WrestleMania. I really liked everything about this. I thought, especially when you've just had, like, you've had a, an, an aggressive hardcore match. And now you've got this sort of, 
th this sort of event type, sports entertainment -y type stuff. And no doubt we've got something very different coming in the main event as well. I think, I think it served its purpose really, really well. So I'm giving it an A minus. And so we come to the main event. It is Daniel Bryan challenging Roman Reigns for the Universal Championship. Edge comes out first. He is the special enforcer for this one, having beat Jey Uso on SmackDown. Uh, Brian is trying to grapple Roman Reigns throughout this. And he keeps getting, almost getting key locks on and arm ringers on and Roman keeps making the ropes. Roman eventually slows this down into an aggressive power game. Few flurries from Daniel Bryan. The light doesn't fade with Daniel. He keeps coming back into this and every so often we'll grab a, grab a limb of Roman and you can see the sort of panic in Roman when these flickers of hope just sort of flash up at him. Daniel Bryan's big push near the end comes when he hits a running knee off the apron straight into the mush of Roman Reigns. He follows up with another with a with a falling knee springboard style back into the ring and starts going for it from here. Uh, he goes and puts the yes lock on. This is the first time the yes lock goes on to Roman Reigns. Roman, like at Elimination Chamber, able to punch his way out of it. The ref gets knocked down with a stray running knee. This means Edge becomes the guest guest enforcer and the guest referee here. He, he gets in there just as Roman Reigns has hit a spear on Brian. Uh, only gets a two. Brian once again gets that yes lock in there, but here comes Jay Uso, armed with a steel chair, wax Edge, wax Daniel Bryan to stop the rot. Brian manages to shoo off Jay Uso with the chair, even gives old, even gonna give old Roman Reigns a hit with the chair. Sizes up to hit Roman with the chair. Roman ducks and Daniel Bryan hits Edge with the chair instead. It's the one thing that they didn't want to happen. Uh, Brian able to counter a Roman spear shortly after this one, back into the yes lock. The third time the yes lock is in on Roman Reigns and Roman is fading. Paul Heyman at ringside pleading with Roman to think about the family and all of this stuff as he's got it locked in tight. And, his, and, and, and you see the light fade from Roman's eyes and it's the most subtle of things you see Roman lift his hand to his face and very gingerly tap out. Now, is it, it, it is blatantly a tap out, but it's the sort of tap out that Roman could explain away if he chose to. But Edge doesn't see it. And Edge, all Edge saw was Brian hit him with a chair. So Edge has got the steel chair and he cracks it over Daniel Bryan's back as he's getting this phantom tap out from Roman Reigns seemingly. He batters Bryan with the chair. He gives Roman a smack with the chair, screaming, this is mine, this is mine, before pulling his own hair out and storming off, leaving these two to it. Uh, one more referee comes out just in time for Roman to crawl over to Daniel Bryan and get the three count. Roman Reigns has survived and is still the Universal Champion. Oh, giving this an A+, plus. nearly gave this an A, but upon revisiting it, I thought, you know what? I love the finish so much. A lot of people who oh, I've seen really love the energy here as well. I've seen some people saying that it was overbooked. I personally disagree because I think it gets us to where we need to go in a predictably unpredictable way. Like the idea, because this, this will lead to, as, as we'll talk about on the Cultaholic News podcast this morning, uh, this will lead to a triple threat for the Universal Championship at WrestleMania, which I am super happy about. And I like the way this went down because Daniel Bryan kind of can say he's beat Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns can say, I never tapped out. Don't know what that was. I just had a spasm or a twitch or something. Edge can be Edge can be what he's what he's been what he's been since he came back in the in, since he came back at the Rumble like this legend of of the game who's almost annoyed with the stars of today we saw it when he came out to see Drew McIntyre after the Rumble and he was like why haven't you attacked me why are you being nice to me and like with Daniel Bryan on SmackDown where he said, look, this is mine now. This isn't your go. This is my go. So you, you've seen this coming for a while and Edge just getting a bit unglued here. Like almost feeling like the focus should be on him and it's not. And that came out in a, in a very aggressive way. I liked it a lot. And the match itself was great. Told a wonderful story of how 
Brian is the grappler, and if he gets Roman on the ground, Roman's in trouble. And it proved it with the end. And they did that so well. It's an A+, plus, a solid main event on Fastlane. And overall, I'm going to give Fastlane an A-. minus. So I did an average grade calculator for this one, because you might think, two A-plus matches, and you're only giving it an A-. minus. Yeah, because I'm, I'm, doing an, I'm trying to do an average grade. And whilst the, whilst the, the kickoff show match the Drew and Sheamus no holes barred shenanigan and the universal title match were both were all excellent two of those were a plus there was there was this the brawn stuff that dragged the average grade down so if you want to know if you want to be annoyed that I've only given this an a minus and maybe not an a plus blame Shane and Braun they brought the side down uh, that stuff really getting dragged out to WrestleMania is is, is very troubling. I don't want it dragged out to WrestleMania. However, this show was very much all about the Shane, the, the Sheamus and Drew dust up and that universal title picture at the end. So lots to love, lots to love. Uh, like watching a WWE event on Peacock, it's not exactly what we hoped for and we can't go back. You get it because you can't rewind on Peacock. Yeah, that's a, that's a good Peacock joke, that. Stay safe. <laughs> Love you. Bye.